May 18, 1969. Apollo 10 prepares for launch from the Kennedy Space Center. 40 seconds and counting, Tom Stafford making a final check of his computer. Apollo 10 basically ran a dress rehearsal for Apollo 11's lunar landing. Launch commit, liftoff. We have liftoff. They did everything Apollo 11 would do short of landing on the moon's surface. This was the most complicated mission to date. As far as anyone on Earth knows, this mission is going like clockwork. Everything according to plan. There's nothing irregular going on at all. But nearly four decades later, lost recordings emerge, revealing an unsettling incident on the far side of the moon. There are recorders that record whatever's going on on the backside, and then you do a data dump when you come around the front side. And Houston or Mission Control then can see what happened when you were around the backside. After the NASA astronauts return to Earth. Uh, Roger, Houston, we are returning to the Earth. Over. NASA transcribes the tapes, then buries them in the archives without comment. It takes years to come to life. The tapes contain recordings of strange otherworldly music coming through the Apollo module's radio. The conversations that follow the sounds makes it clear they are unlike anything the astronauts have ever heard. I didn't need to keep it sound on spacey, didn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. In their headsets, it sounded like a woo-woo kind of a noise. Sounds like, uh, you know, outer space type music. If I were to hear something back there, the first thing probably would freak me out. Boy, that sure is weird music. Over the course of an hour, they mention it multiple times. This is not just some anomaly. This is something that they're all really hearing, and it's really weird. <laughs> The astronauts struggle to identify the cause of the strange sounds. The sounds that the astronauts heard could not be coming from the planet Earth because they're on the far side of the moon, out of contact with the Earth. I'll tell you, John, that music is really weird. After almost an hour of transmission, the sound stops. Boy, it got quiet, didn't it? Before they re-enter radio contact with Earth, the astronauts discuss whether to report their experience to mission control. The Apollo 10 sounds remain a mystery for decades until another NASA probe uncovers a possible clue to their nature. The Cassini spacecraft picked up broadcasts like this from Saturn. These noises, some of them are really weird. They even sound, under some conditions, like strange alien speech. For the sounds from Saturn, there is a scientific explanation. These are caused by charged particles moving through Saturn's magnetic environment. Imagine being on the back side of the moon, all alone, away from the Earth, and hearing these kinds of sounds. I can understand how they could have been unnerved. But the unsettling noises the Apollo 10 astronauts heard could not be caused by magnetic field. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere or a magnetic field, so we wouldn't expect it to be making any transmissions that could be picked up on a radio. Since the sounds can't be from the moon, NASA's radio technicians come up with their own theory. The radios in the two spacecraft were interfering with each other. They were on VHF and there was a bit of radio interference and that was the source of the sound. But Apollo astronaut Al Warden doesn't agree with the radio theory. The Apollo 10 crew is very used to the kind of noise that they should be hearing. Logic tells me that if there was something recorded on there, then there was something there. Well, I don't know what the hell that was, babe. The Apollo 10 astronauts never publicly discussed what they heard. May 23rd, 2014. The Russian Space Agency announces it is launching three satellites. Generally speaking, 
everybody who launches spacecraft tells everyone else what they're doing. It's the only way that you can ensure safety of the launch and the safety of the other countries so that there's no difficulty or collision. The satellites, numbered 2496 to 2498, are part of the Russian Cosmos series. The Cosmos satellites are a Russian series of military communication satellites. They used to relay messages from ships at sea and ground forces back to their base. Space enthusiasts across the globe tracking the three new satellites see something totally unexpected. A fourth object appearing in Earth's orbit. So when Russia launches three satellites and acknowledges that and tells everybody, and then does a fourth, it's not only mysterious and concerning, it could be potentially dangerous. At first, amateurs assume that the mystery object is space junk. You do get plenty of space junk, which comes from the launches and from operations in orbit. But this is unusual. It seems to be moving in a fixed fashion. The US Department of Defense begins to track the fourth object. To their amazement, it starts to move like it has a mind of its own. This isn't a weather satellite or communication satellite. Those don't maneuver very much. If you have an object that shows up in space that is clearly under intelligent control, you're going to have a lot of people asking questions about what's going on. The mystery deepens when the object then seems to rendezvous with other Russian spacecraft. If, in fact, the Russians have very maneuverable spacecraft, satellite or otherwise, that can change orbit, that can go to other satellites, there are a lot of possibilities on what that could accomplish, all the way from being a repair station or a refueling station for other satellites. Despite repeated requests for information, the Russians refuse to comment on the unidentified object. Part of the Russian rules are to deny everything and admit nothing. I never believe them when they say that. You know, I don't believe anything that they say anyway, so I feel like it's something that we always have to look into. The West faces the alarming prospect that the unidentified object could be a new breed of space weapon. The idea of anti-satellite weaponry is old. It goes back to when satellites were first developed. If somebody's gonna put up a satellite, somebody else is gonna say, well, we'll take it out. You don't need James Bond laser beams to kill satellites. You need other satellites to kill satellites things in orbit are actually moving quite fast. And to destroy something in orbit, all you have to do is put something in front of something else. If Russia's mystery object is a satellite killer, it could mark the beginning of a space arms race.